Welcome to the OutSystems lesson on adapting a pattern with dynamic DOM. In this lesson, we'll cover the following topics, including an example of adapting a pattern in OutSystems. First, I'll present an overview of how you can adapt a pattern and then introduce the feedback message pattern and show you how to adapt it with some custom CSS in OutSystems Service Studio. When you want to use a pattern that already exists, with some style and CSS customization, we refer to this as adapting a pattern. The workflow for changing a pattern CSS style sheet typically involves using your chosen browser's developer tools. You can use the developer tools to analyze the CSS of the original patterns and use it as a starting point. To accomplish this, you first need to build a sample screen with the pattern. Then, you would open the browser developer tools to inspect the HTML structure and the CSS styles and classes used in the pattern. Using the developer tools, you can start making CSS changes directly in the browser's inspector style sheet while previewing them at the same time in the browser. Once you're happy with the result, you can then copy and paste the CSS into the theme style sheet of your application. To demonstrate how to adapt a pattern, we'll adapt the Silk UI's feedback message. The feedback message pattern displays a text message inside a container with a specific background color. This color varies depending on if the message is for success, information only, a warning message, or an error message. The message is displayed sliding down from the top of the screen. Instead of dragging and dropping the feedback message pattern to the screen, the pattern is triggered in the logic flow of an action. In the following demo, we're going to adapt the feedback message pattern by changing the CSS to customize our sample application. In the application, we have a screen with four buttons, and each one of them triggers a different feedback message. One for success, one for error, one for warning, and then one for information only. Our goal is to change the colors, size, position, typography, and animation of these feedback messages. Now that we've covered the steps to adapt this type of pattern, let's put this into practice in OutSystem Service Studio. Here in Service Studio, you can see the screen with the four buttons. As I click on each of these buttons, you can see the on-click event that passes a parameter. It's basically an integer that's passed to the call feedback message action. Here when I open up the screen action, you can see depending on which button is clicked, the action will determine which feedback message is displayed. When I preview this in the browser window, once again, I can click on the error or warning message buttons, and then I'll have to click the message itself to make it disappear. However, when I choose success or the info button, the message will appear for a few seconds, but then it goes away by itself. To start testing the CSS to customize these messages, I'll use the shortcut key on the keyboard, Control shift i to open up the Chrome Developer Tools. Now let's suppose I'd like to work on the success message first. I can choose it, right-click, choose Inspect. However, there's a bit of a challenge here in that you can see the code disappears. So a workaround that I can use is simply click the error message, right-click on the message there, choose Inspect, and then I can find the class here in the code. I'll change this error class to success. Once I've made this change, I can now leverage this CSS code and begin to make some changes. So once I determine the class that I'm looking for and that I'd like to customize, I'll go ahead and find the styles that I need in the original theme. Then I'll go ahead and copy all of this code and then paste it into my own inspector style sheet. Now that I have this CSS code within the inspector style sheet, I can begin to customize anything here, including the background colors, margins, or padding. While we could begin to make some changes here, for the moment, this is not exactly where I want to work. What I'd like to do is I'd like to reposition this message and then make some other changes to the wrapper. So back in the Elements tab, I'll click on that and then find the Feedback Message Wrapper. And then here I can begin to add the classes that I need. For the wrapper, we'll set a background with some opacity, but a darker color, using 0006. Next, we'll set a fixed position, and then we'll set the top, left, and right bottom to 0. Setting a position of fixed and a top left and right bottom of zero will hold this wrapper central to the screen. As I make this final change to the z-index, you can see the dark opaque background come to the forefront over the top of the buttons. Now that we've completed this CSS, let's go back into the inspector style sheet and make some adjustments to the feedback message. First of all, I'll change the padding to 20 pixels. After making the adjustments to the padding, 
I'd like to reposition this. So I'll use the absolute positioning. Then we'll set the top to 50% and then left to 50% as well. At this point, I'll need to override the right positioning by using the initial attribute. And then what I'd like is a width of 80% of the view window. So we'll set the attribute of width to 80 VW. And then finally, we'll add a minimum height of 200 pixels. Now let's make some adjustments to the icon. I'll right click on the icon and choose inspect. And here's the class that we need to adjust here. The margin is set to an absolute position. So I'm going to override that with the position and set it to static. Next, I'll set the display to block. Then we'll use center for the text align. We'll set a font size of 70 pixels and then an opacity of 0.8. Next, we'll adjust the styles for the feedback message text. So I'll click on that class. And here you can see that we need to add it once again to our styles. So I'll double click on that and then click the plus button to create a new style for this in the inspector style sheet. So let's first add some padding. We'll add a padding of 20 pixels, zero and zero. And then let's adjust the font weight to 400. Instead of setting a text align style here, I'm going to click on the inspector style sheet and let's go back and make some adjustments here to the feedback message. I'll set the text align to center. To properly position this feedback message, we can use the transform CSS property. The transform CSS property lets you modify the coordinate space of the CSS visual formatting model. We should be able to use it here, but according to the preview, there seems to be a problem with our CSS code. We'll need to fix this now. Remember that the feedback message is going to be animated onto the screen. So if we click back to the elements tab and then we choose the computed, you can see here we have an animation name class. So I'm going to click on that class and then search for the keyframes for this animation. Once I've found those keyframes, I'll simply copy them and paste them over to our style sheet. Then I'll paste them at the very bottom of the styles. Now we can begin to edit the CSS code. All of this code will need the translate X. So I'll go ahead and I'll paste that in the appropriate positions within the CSS code. As I change these values for each section, notice that we can see the preview changing as well. There are four blocks of CSS code for this. Feedback message slide down then up, and then also feedback message slide down with keyframes and WebKit keyframes for each. Be sure to pay close attention to any comments in the code that may be able to assist you with understanding what CSS may already be written there. The reason that we have keyframe animations for slide down then up and also slide down is because remember, some of these messages will slide back in and slide back out like the success message. However, the error message and the warning message, you'll have to click on them so they won't slide back up. Things are looking pretty good now, but let's suppose I wanted to make some more changes. I'd like a white background and maybe some black text. I'll go back to the feedback message class and I'll set a background of white. Then I'll also set a color of black. When I test this, I can see that the color's working, but the background is not working. We're gonna have to get more specific with this style. A little bit further below, in lines number 25 through 39, we have a very specific background color already designated for each of these messages. In order for this to function properly, I'm going to need to work within the specific styles for these background colors. To do this, I'll just go ahead and combine them all into one class, and then I can set the background color to this class. I'll go ahead and set the background color to white, and then click on it and give it just a little bit of opacity. Now I'll test out the various feedback messages to see how they look. They look pretty good, but the problem now is there's no color to designate the differences in the messages. So at this point, I'll need to adjust the styles for the icons. We can use the class that's already been created for the icon. We'll simply copy and then paste it below the background color class. Now I'll need to create an individual class for each one of these icons and then designate the color that I'd like to choose for each one. So for example, for the error, we'll use red. 
For success, of course, we'll use green. For the warning message, we'll use orange. And then for the info message, we'll use blue. Once this is completed, we can test this out. As I test out these feedback messages, everything seems to look fine. The error message, the warning message, info, and success all have the colors that I'm looking for. However, there's just a couple of tweaks that I'd like to make here in the CSS code. First of all, I'm going to delete this because we've moved it to a different class in this code. Let's also add a border radius. We'll set it to eight pixels. And then finally, let's also add a box shadow. And for the box shadow, we'll use zero, zero, and five pixels. And then let's add a color of 333. I'll test this once again. And our feedback messages are looking exactly like I want them to. At this point, I think we're ready to take this CSS code back over to OutSystem Service Studio. So I'll hit Control A, copy all of the code, and then back in Service Studio, we'll go to the Demo App Themes. Here at the very bottom of the CSS style sheet, I'll go ahead and paste the code that I've created. I'll click OK, and then let's preview our changes in the browser window. Testing my application in Google Chrome, I can click on each of the buttons and see all of the styles that I've created applied to the feedback messages.